people in this video let us look at this virology topic topic varicella zoster virus vzv basically varicella zoster virus vzv causes chicken pox right and in a reactivation of a latent varicella uh, virus infection the infection is called as herpes zoster or shingles so it causes chicken pox and it also causes herpes zoster or shingles so basically these uh, this is a dna virus varicella zoster virus is a dna virus it comes under this herpes virus it is called as human herpes virus 3 okay it is a double stranded dna virus which has linear dna so some photos for you from the internet chicken pox vesicular rashes zoster shingles Moving on now to herpes virus, guys. So herpes virus, basically, you can see it's uh, uh, how it is. It has double-stranded DNA. Double-stranded DNA. You can see it is double-stranded. It is linear DNA. So it has icosahedral capsid. It has icosahedral nucleocapsid. It has tegument, and it has this envelope. which is a lipid layer to which glycoproteins are attached so there is a glycoprotein spike okay this is the herpes virus so varicella zoster virus causes what chicken pox zoster or shingles so varicella zoster virus produces vesicular eruptions on the skin and mucous membrane either as chicken pox or as zoster or shingles chicken pox is characterized by generalized diffuse bilateral vesicular rashes bilateral remember they are using very specific words here diffuse it will be bilateral vesicular rashes usually occurs in children okay remember this chicken pox is a primary infection right uh, diffuse bilateral vesicular rashes so if this person is there you can see that both the sides he has these rashes right so both the sides he has these rashes so that is why it is bilateral both the sides he has Zoster or shingles, guys. Uh, following reactivation of the latent varicella zoster virus, basically this will be sitting in the trigeminal ganglia. Okay, so these virus can be there in trigeminal ganglia, and they get reactivated. Okay, they get reactivated. So a latent um, varicella zoster virus in trigeminal ganglia gets reactivated to cause the zoster or shingles. Vesicular rashes here are unilateral and segmental, confined to the skin, innervated by a single sensory ganglion. So you have seen here, we have shown continuous kind of uh, vesicular rashes, unilateral. So chicken pox will be bilateral, shingles will be unilateral. So this is what is very important. This is unilateral rashes, and it will be in continuous uh, like it will be segmental innervated by a single sensory ganglion right moving on guys let us see the pathogenesis of chicken pox basically the port of entry it enters uh, through the upper respiratory mucosa or even the conjunctiva spread the spread is that it replicates in the regional lymph nodes it spills over enters the blood it, then it goes to the liver spleen then it again enters the blood stream right that will become secondary viremia and then what it does it starts infecting the skin neurons and what else the respiratory tract so is this clear so see if you have understood this port port of entry is the upper respiratory tract conjunctiva the virus is going to enter it's going to spread it is how from the lymph nodes blood liver spleen again blood second it will affect the skin respiratory tract and the neurons okay so in skin what happens the virus replication in the epithelial cells leads to these typical rashes swelling of the epithelial cells ballooning degeneration accumulation of tissue fluid results in the formation of vesicles okay so basically virus is going to replicate in the skin in the epithelial cells developing the rashes there is ballooning degeneration remember these are very specific words ballooning degeneration accumulation of tissue fluid formation of vesicles okay what happens in the respiratory tract the virus is shed in the respiratory secretions so definitely this person will start transmitting this virus to others 
What about neurons? They gain access to the neurons of the trigeminal ganglia and they undergo latency in that. That is when, when they get reactivated from the trigeminal ganglion, they cause a secondary infection. That is the zoster or shingles. That's all. So now let us move on. Guys, pathogenesis is done. Clinical manifestation. So the incubation period is about 10 to 12, 21 days, 2 to 3 weeks. That is typical description of the chickenpox rashes. You know, how will you explain the rashes? There will be vesicular. There will be bilateral. Yes, there is centripetal in distribution. That means they start on the face, the trunk. They spread towards the uh, flexor surfaces. Bilateral diffusion distribution. So basically, it is a centripetal in distribution from face to the other places. It's bilateral and diffuse in distribution. Okay, then. So basically, they are going to have a lot of eruptions. So these, uh, there can be lesions with various stages. Okay, maculopapules can be there, vesicles can be there, scabs can be there. All in the same area, they can be there. Okay. This is called as rashes appearing in multiple crops. That's what they are referring to. Fever also appears with each crop of rashes. Fever appears. Okay. So chickenpox is usually a disease of childhood. When it occurs in adults, it's very severe with uh, bullous and hemorrhagic rashes. Even bleeding from these rashes can be there if it occurs in adults. Okay. So do, did you understand the clinical manifestations? Guys, how is it going so far? Uh, we are looking at chickenpox. And we have seen the pathogenesis, how from one person it goes to the other person via the upper respiratory tract. Uh, then it goes to the lymph nodes from there to the blood, then from there to the liver, spleen, to the skin, the neurons, to the respiratory tract, etc. Then you also saw the clinical ma uh, manifestations where you saw how the rashes appear. There's crops, like multiple crops they go. So you can see lesions in various stages, right? They're centripetal in distribution. They start from the face, go to the trunk and they go everywhere else right they start on the face and the trunk actually and then they go to the flexor surfaces they are bilateral they are diffuse okay so how about going to the complications now are you okay fine to go to the complications of what today we are studying today we are studying chicken pox okay so now we have we are going to the complications of chicken pox so let us continue with the complications of chicken pox so basically the complications will be secondary bacterial infection can happen. There can be CNS involvement. So there can be cerebellar, cerebellar ataxia, encephalitis, meningitis can be there. Varicella pneumonia can happen, right, which is a very serious complication. So varicella pneumonia, it can happen mostly in adults. It happens than in children, okay. And even it is very severe in pregnant women. Ray syndrome, basically this is an encephalitis, right, encephalopathy. So basically, it occurs uh, secondary to a varicella zoster infection. It is characterized by fatty degeneration of liver following aspirin intake. So that is why you should not give aspirin to children. Coming to the other complications of chickenpox, myocarditis, nephritis, corneal lesions, arthritis. So it can affect the eye also. In pregnancy, if uh, there is chickenpox, basically it can affect the, both the mother and the fetus. The mother is at high risk of developing varicella pneumonia and coming to the fetus there can be congenital varicella syndrome it is very teratogenic this varicella zoster virus is very teratogenic uh, so risk is maximum if mother acquires primary infection during pregnancy so basically what happens is in the second half of pregnancy if there is uh, a varicella zoster infection primary infection in the mother there can be congenital malformation in the fetus Okay, there's another point here mentioned here that if the mother gets infection just five days before to two days after the delivery, then there is high chance that the there can be neonatal varicella. Okay, so these were the complications of uh, chicken pox guys, varicella, uh, zoster virus. So you saw that in pregnancy, especially during delivery, just five days before the delivery, etc. If the mother gets infected, then there can be neonatal varicella. If uh, in the second half of pregnancy, the mother acquires this uh, primary infection of uh, chickenpox, that is varicella zoster virus, then there can be congenital mal malformation. Just a word here on uh, epidemiology. Chickenpox is highly contagious. Okay. Humans are the only known reservoir host. But there is something here. One attack gives lifelong immunity. 
However, they again have written here that secondary attack rate is about 70 to 90 percent. So this was about chickenpox. We will continue with the, the zoster or shingles in the next video guys. So basically in this video we have seen only chickenpox. So varicella zoster virus causes chickenpox and it also can cause herpes zoster and shingles. Herpes zoster and shingles we will be looking at in the next video. Okay. So take a recap of what we have seen so far about chickenpox. We saw the pathogenesis, how there is mode of uh, transmission, what and all it affects, then uh, what are the rashes, how will you describe the rashes, clinical manifestations, complications of chickenpox. We have seen. varicella zoster uh, virus infection can be prevented with a live attenuated vaccine. Okay. And also immunoglobulins are available for passive immunization. Okay. So there is live attenuated vaccine for uh, varicella zoster and also there are immunoglobulins. Okay. In case the person is infected, the treatment will be with acyclovir, which is an antiviral drug. Okay.